how Desert Rose forms. Desert Rose is an extremely unique and very recognisable material that forms in arid environments all around the world. I'm going to break down how this very unusual material forms in five easy, manageable, beginner-friendly steps. Ready? Silica and barite precipitation, nucleation and crystal formation, growth of crystals, cementation, erosion and exposure. The formation of Desert Rose is going to start with the dissolution of minerals like gypsum, anhydrite and barite in water that is saturated with dissolved silica. As this water permeates through the desert soil, it carries dissolved silica along with it. And when this silica-rich water encounters the minerals like gypsum, anhydrite and barite, a chemical reaction is going to occur. The initial step in this process involves the precipitation of silica gel and barite. Silica gel, which is a non-crystalline form of silicon dioxide, begins to form as the water evaporates, causing silica molecules to come together and form a gel-like substance. Simultaneously, barite crystals start to precipitate out of the solution, laying the groundwork for the formation of desert roses. With the presence of silica gel and barite crystals established, the second stage in desert rose formation commences with nucleation. Nucleation essentially occurs as silica and barite molecules arrange themselves into the initial structures of the roses. Driven by the natural affinity of silica and barite molecules to bond with each other, they start to form nuclei. These nuclei serve as a foundation upon which desert roses will develop and form, Depending on the environmental conditions and mineral composition, this nuclei typically take on a disc or spherical shape. Now the nuclei are established, the third step in desert rose formation can take place. Now this is basically characterised by the growth of the crystals. Dissolved silica and barite in the surrounding water are going to continue to adhere to this nuclei, causing the crystals to grow outward. This growth process occurs through what's known as accretion, where new silica and barite molecules attach themselves to the surface of that nuclei. Then over time, these molecules will align in a repeating pattern, forming crystalline structures characteristic of desert roses. As these crystals continue to grow, the fourth stage of desert rose formation, which is known as cementation, will begin. Now, cementation occurs when dissolved minerals in the surrounding water, such as calcium carbonate or even iron oxides, precipitate out and act as cement, binding the silica and barite crystals together. It's this process that reinforces the structure of the desert rose, making it more robust and resistant to weathering. The types and abundance of cementing minerals can influence the colour and the texture of the desert rose, contributing to its visual diversity, and is why we see so many different shades of desert rose. The final step in the formation of desert rose involves erosion and just simple exposure, because over time, geological processes that are actually quite simple, things like wind and water erosion, gradually uncover and expose desert rose that have been buried beneath the surface. As the surrounding sediment erodes away, desert rose is revealed, often found in clusters or layers with sedimentary rocks. Exposure to these elements further shapes and refines the appearance of desert rose, highlighting their very unique and very distinctive appearance. Let us know in the comments the kind of crystals, minerals and precious metals you'd like us to cover next.